the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Right? Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Do you hear that in there? This this night of gloom, that, that's just your life. That's it. It's just this little teeny piece of time. Right? Eternity is the blessed ever going forever morning. The golden morning. Think about that. You know? And you have some people just come back from Hawaii looking at some beautiful sunsets, I'm sure. Maybe even some sunrises, huh? Yes, beautiful weather. Now you're back with a little bit of cold. But it's just for a <laughs>
Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter 1. You know, the last few times I've preached, I've stayed right in there and just, you know, dug right in. But today, we're not doing that. Today, we're going to jump around some. Okay? <laughs> so, get your pages ready to go. So, Hebrews chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Who are these prophets? Did they not write books? Yeah. Did these books sit here in front of us? Yeah. How did the world receive the prophets? Not well. Not well, right? So how do we... Why, why, why is it that we think that we're going to be friends with the world when we bring in this message? Why is it that we are offended or ashamed when we, we want everybody to like us? Well, what did they do to these people? Yeah. Chopped their heads off? Sawed them in half? Hung them from trees? Yeah. Chained them to the floor of basements? Yeah. Burned them to the stake? Right? So how are we any different? How are we any different? Look at, look at the things that are said about Ellen White. And, and, and the things you can read on the internet. But none of them people take, like the Bible says, what does the Bible say? It says, test the spirits, right? It says, look in. What happens when you read and find out the truth? It changes you, doesn't it? Let us not be uh, consumed with thoughts of how the world will receive us. Let's do the work of God. You know? Let the chips fall where they will. We don't want to wait until it's too late. Let's do the work while it's easier. Amen. Not while it's difficult. Because the work is going to be done. Because God's word has never failed. And it won't fail. And that's what this whole message is about today. It's about God's word. That's all it's about. It's a very simple message. It's not very difficult theology for somebody to understand. Verse 2. Hath in these last times spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also had made the worlds. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Jesus spoke and it stood fast. That's mighty power. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person in upholding all things by the word of his power. By the word of his power. Why doesn't it say the power of his word? It says the word of his power. Hmm. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty of on high. Jesus is the redeemer and the creator. He is the very word of God. Can you imagine that kind of power? Think about that for a moment. When God speaks, things come into existence. Amen. Worlds, galaxies, by His very Word, they come out of nothing. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't even make sense, does it? Let's turn to 1 Timothy. I want to... Um, I'm going to digress here off the subject for just a minute because um, somebody had a question last week and I'm going to answer that question. So we'll get back to it here in a minute. But 1 Timothy and chapter 6, beginning in verse 11. You all there? Amen. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. Godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, 
who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, un unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. You hear me now? This is where I wanted to get to is verse 16. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. You know, there's many churches that teach that people are immortal. They go on forever, right? That's what they teach. What does the Bible teach? Only Jesus has immortality. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to begin in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at what time? At the last trump. For the, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So we don't have immortality, we must put it on, right? And when do we put it on? At the last trump. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but there it is. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Praise God. Amen. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through whom, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? Amen. I want us to go now to uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. And I'm closing the door back on subject. There's the answer to the question. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Everybody there? Yep. All right, we're going to begin in verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Right? That's the here and now, right? To yesterday is gone. Tomorrow isn't here. Right? Jesus is now. He's the great I am, it says, right? That means what? Now. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, what is that telling us? Is it telling us that maybe we ought to not uh, be so consumed in our own thoughts, but maybe we ought to seek the mind of Christ? Amen. See what He has for us? What is His intent for the day? For the moment? For our entire life? He's the great orchestrator of all things. Listen, if, if, if you need something, He can bring it in a moment. If you're in His will, everything's going to click. I mean, even if you find yourself in a prison somewhere. Even if you find yourself in a prison. If you find yourself in a prison, that may be just where you want to be. If that's where Jesus wants you. Yeah. 
For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth the bud, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word go. So, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I pleased, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Amen. That's powerful, Amen. right? God has made a promise right there. He, he doesn't speak idle words. Man speaks idle words. God does not speak idle words. For ye shall go out with joy and be led, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Whew. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall, and it sh and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen? Amen? How is this made possible? By the Word. By the Word. By the Word of His power. God speaks, and it is. Let us turn to Psalms. Psalm 33. <laughs> Do a little Bible exercise today, a little page turn. Y'all there? 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap, he layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Faith chapter, right? In verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, what? God can speak things out of thin air, and they just appear, right? That's mighty powerful, isn't it? So what have we to fear? If we serve a God that can do this. Is there any fear? Should there be any fear? Not if you're serving Him. Not if you're coming close to Him. Romans 12. said this is a very simple sermon. Not difficult. Y'all ready? 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, even though this world spends lots of time trying to teach you how to think and how to speak and what to wear, they're, they're constantly trying to mold your mind. But shouldn't we be different? Shouldn't we think different? Shouldn't we look different than the world? How much different do we? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. The word there, metamorphosis, by the renewing of your mind, in order that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
Is there something you want more than that? I hope not. I hope you really do want the will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. What is this measure of faith that God has given to every man? Is he really given it to every man? Yes. If he is, how can there be somebody who says there is no God? Let us turn back to Genesis. Let us go right to the beginning. That book ought to be easy to find, right? Okay, chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Let us begin in um, verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman that thou gavest to me, gaveth to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon the belly. On thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all thy days of thy life. And then verse 15 it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What is, is this enmity something that's just natural? No, this enmity is supernatural, right? This is something that God did, because if God didn't put this supernatural enmity in each and every one of us, then we would be in league with the devil full sway and at war with God. Right? I mean, there would be no hope. There'd be no hope. This enmity is the faith. Okay? And when that faith is exercised, it grows. The more you use it, the bigger it gets. But the Bible promises us right there, from our great-great-grandmother, Eve, we all get this enmity, right? It was passed on, wasn't it? Yeah. So, as it said, that all men have a measure of faith, that measure of faith was God-given, wasn't it? Yes. So let us build on it. How do we build? On this faith. Hearing, right? What happens? You believe, you grow in grace, right? And in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you begin to learn the will of God. I really do believe we do not speak by the words as far as, uh, I mean, we do speak by the words, but I think we speak. Either God's words, or we seek to speak the enemy's words. Yeah. There really is no middle ground. You, you serve something or someone. I want to continue on. Uh, verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, and, and for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. And Adam's... And Adam's... And Adam called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. 
And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, let us put forth our hand and take also of let let he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So what did he have to do? He had to guard us and guide us out of there, right? Yes. Because we would have perpetuated sin forever, correct? Yes. yes. What did what did God say about Eve? Did she say that her desire should be for her husband? So if, if the woman follows the word of God, she can be happy, right? Correct? Yeah. What about the man? Doesn't it say that the man should reverence his wife? Or no, the wife should reverence her husband, right? And the, the, the husband should love his wife. So the wife needs love, and the husband needs reverence, right? Respect. How, is that, how does that play off in the bigger picture? We are the bride of Christ, right? Does, does Jesus love the church? He gave himself to her, right? So, how does she treat her husband? How do you show an individual respect? Yeah. By listening intently, right? Isn't that what the Bible says? Listening intently, and, and that's what we use the word obey. We use the word obey, but everybody thinks the word obey means you have to do something. But what it means is to listen intently. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to begin in verse 5. This is the story of the centurion. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, come, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be, be cast out into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto this centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. That's amazing, isn't it? This man just believed, period, that Jesus said it, and it happens. But his own people don't believe. How is that so? If we just skip up to verse, well, from the beginning here, at verse 2, right? And behold, there came a leper, a leper, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, cat, if thou wilt, thou can make me, make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately. Yeah. See how, how the word works? It's that quick. But we have to believe it. We have to honor the word. We have to respect the word. Jesus is that word. When we begin to do this, like this centurion, like this leper, we're going to go home. 
we're going to go home. Because everything we need, Jesus has sent. He's already put it.